Welcome to season 29 of the American Wood Shop. I'm Scott Phillips, and later in the season you'll see Susie. Now, today's all about live edge work, where you have that crisp, natural edge, and it just speaks to you. So learn all the tricks today on the American Wood Shop about live edge work. The American Wood Shop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by Woodcraft since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Pro Tools for Tool Pros. Rikon Tools. Woodcraft Magazine. Projects, plans, and web links designed to help you make wood work. P.S. Wood, home of Timberwolf Swedish Silicon Steel bandsaw blades and super sharp scroll saw blades. A bed to sleep on. A table to share meals. A house that feels like a home. The Furniture Bank of Central Ohio. Providing furniture to neighbors in need. Today we're going to use live edge wood to create a very unusual freestanding tea cabinet, very similar to what James Krenov used to make, yet different. So I'm going to set this out of the way because we need to use the one invaluable tool when you're dealing with irregular edges, and that is a track saw. Now whatever you do, be sure to read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with the tools and products you use. Work safely. And, and using this track saw, even though it's on dust collection, I still like to wear an N95 dust mask because this is a heavy duty cut. And we need to create a glue up out of this. Now you'll see what's going on after we make the cut. And this is set up right here. You can see a split in the end. And I'll do a rip cut first, then a couple cross cuts to get this prepped so we can take it to the planer. All right, I think we've got it. Let's see here if this is all the way through. Oh yeah, that's perfect. And they sell two versions of this style track saw. The, this is a 55, and they sell one that will cut thicker material, but they're more expensive. Now let me show you why a track saw is the perfect way to go when you're doing live edge work. I'm going to flip this edge up, and you can see it's a perfect cut. And if you make the cut without stopping, you can use that as your glue seam and glue this back together. But before we do that, we're going to take this to a planer, a helical head 15 inch planer, plane this down both sides, get it perfect, and then we can come back here and do the glue up. True or false, you can make a wood joint stronger if you brush it out and size it into the pores of the wood and let it air dry for about three minutes before you put the seams together. It's actually true. They've done studies where it's more than 20% stronger if you let that air dry. And I'm going to bring this around straight from the planer. And now I can clamp this up. Now, I'm just gonna throw the clamps on thoughtfully. And I do not want to spread that seam. I wanna keep it even. So I'll work the clamps down the way, and this will take a good, oh, two hours to dry on a big seam like that. And I don't wanna create a bow when I draw this tight in the top of the board, but I do want that right there, a squeeze out. But I don't want to starve the joint. I just want it tight enough to get a good, strong bond. Now, that's how I do the glue up, and we can shape that later. But let's head outside for another Live Edge project. It's beautiful. Let's go. So this is the payoff right here. A Live Edge slab for a tabletop 
Let's go into the Gertners. And I made a pedestal base out of chestnut oak scraps that was left over from their job. You'll see that in a second. But I defy you. Find the glue seam in that board. I mean, you match the grain and away you go. And this has armor seal on it. They're going to top coat it with a urethane oil. And now what I'm going to do is join this all together. Very simple construction here. And you want to use the right size of square drive washer head screws. Because if you don't, well, that could change your project. So this is all pre-drilled. And what I'm doing is using a square driver here. And we'll get this married together and up to the Gertners. And we'll see their project. Got to line that hole up right there. And put a smile on their face. I'll get this done and off to the Gertners we go. We're here with Barry Gertner. And Barry, what do you think of your new oh, table? Oh, Scott, this is absolutely beautiful. And this is from your cutoffs. This post came from this piece right here. And then the trim boards. Well, tell us about the wood and how you used it. So this came from a local sawmill. It's chestnut white oak. OK, which is going to be super durable to begin with. Yes. OK, and then what did you put on it? What finish? Well, I didn't put anything on it. My wife did all the finishing. Teamwork. All yeah, right. absolutely. But it's a uh, it's a marine spar. Okay. Now, see, I try to get Susie to do all my finishing too. <laughs> You'll tell me have have tell me how you get that done. But I want you to look at one other thing that they did that's brilliant right here. See this plate? This is a lift, and right here you can see how there's a gap where the wood is not on the concrete. You cannot have wood. I don't care how durable it is setting on concrete because it'll wick up moisture and it'll rot out. And then that's how you trim it out with quarter cut wood, straight grain wood. You wouldn't want cathedral arches here. It would blow out when it would move. But what a look, Barry. You got to love this. Absolutely thrilled. Okay. Scott. So 11 by 11 and that, Solid. that section came from the bottom of this. Yes, it did. So yes, it did. never give up on the what people call scraps. Absolutely. Outstanding. You happy? That's fantastic. I am thrilled, Scott. OK, now I want to talk to your crew because Absolutely. real task, Jake. Hi, Scott. Hey, good seeing good you. See you now, too. Tell us about what you're doing to trim out the rafters. So what we're doing on the rafters is we brought it down an inch and a quarter and patted it down to allow right. it to breathe and right. for something to nail to and so we're not messing with the roofing nails. And then yeah. the, the color that you vary, so the dark, the light, the contrast, Spectacular. Thank you. You guys are doing a great job here. And then this fireplace mantle, again, chestnut oak. Great, and that took some doing. It did, yeah. Well, my hat's off to you because I've watched your crew pull this whole job together. What was the toughest thing? Well, to be honest, it was probably setting these big old posts. <laughs> they, was, they were heavy, and, and it was a real struggle. But Well, it's eight yeah. pounds of board foot. I calculated each one of those posts at just shy of 700 pounds because okay. it's going to dry out. So you are men of men. Yeah. OK, <laughs> we'll keep it coming. Now let's go look at the, the barn doors that you made. Now on every project, there's a muse, right, Barry? Absolutely. OK, and I think we've got ours right here. <laughs> Cynthia, you did a great job on all the finishing. And, she did, Scott. And the barn doors, the hardware, all of this is, again, made out of that chestnut oak from the local mill. Yes, it, yes, it was. OK, so the moisture content right now is 25%. What I didn't share with you is, OK, it's as wide as it's going to be as a board right now. It's going to shrink down. So you're going to get some little gaps. Right. And that's what they put little batten pieces. It can be on, on the, the outside side. or the inside. Doesn't right. matter. Right. But the X bracing is what's going to keep these doors square. OK, and that's why they do that. How was the hardware for you? It was incredibly easy. And, that, and actually, we, I took it another step, Scott. At the top and the bottom of each board, I put a piece of angle iron. Awesome. To try to you know, prevent any warping or you know, try to reduce the amount of shrinking on there. So we're, we're hoping that keeps the, board, the door square. It's beautiful. Thank you, Scott. It was. So where are you at on the budget? I used all of it, Scott. <laughs> every bit of it. Every well, bit of it. And my it was friend. worth yeah, every it penny. Was. It was. We're, we're thrilled. Thank you for stopping by. Hey, can't wait to see it when it's finished, Barry. 
See ya. Stop back, bud. See back ya. to the wood shop to finish that project. Take a look at this beautiful glue up. Now at the end of this season, on the 13th show, this will become a fantastic tabletop. We'll set that aside. And the reason I showed you how to plane this down and make the plane glue up was so you could see exactly how I made these two pieces. And this will be one side of that case. The one below it will be the other side. Very easy construction, but what I have to do is cut it to the finished length right now and I put that case, which is just a box with five pieces of recycled plywood that are screwed together with some pocket holes cut there. More on that in a second. Let's make these cuts. And I just use a track saw with a shorter track and I lay the edge of that track right on the layout line I make my cuts. That is a perfect cut every time. Now one more cut and then we can get on to assembly. When you build a case or cabinet, you have a back, top and a bottom that are identical, two sides that are identical. And then what I'm doing is sandwiching this between the two live edge slabs, left and right. The key distance three inches down from the top, this will reveal a secret compartment in just a second. So what I'm doing right now is just pre-drilling countersunk pilot holes so that I can screw all this together. And I would never do that without pre-drilling those holes and then square drive flat head screws just the right length and you don't want to strip those out and I'll do this six on this side six on the other side can you see how this is coming together so left and right live edge and narrow part down but it's rock solid okay and now I'm doing this face frame out of chestnut that's been hand carved and I need to miter it and I've laid in some miter cuts as you can see here, 45 degree miters and got the spacing to the top of this that's marked down here with the miter gauge or the compound square actually at 45. So I know exactly where to cut. And then this piece right here butts in across and fills out the top of that once that's cut. So off to the miter saw. Now it's key to let that blade come to a stop. Oftentimes people raise that blade after they make a 45 degree miter cut while the blade's coasting down and that can make that cut not very accurate. So. The other thing I like to do, go off the set of the tooth, to the layout line, just like that, lock her down, finish the cut. Now from here, it's over to the bench to do the biscuits. These mitered corners with the carving on the chestnut are held together by the number 20 biscuits. And to make those cuts the right way, this is on-demand dust collection. Let me just make one and you'll see what's going on here. I'll make the first cut. And you can see that slot right there. Just like that. And that fits right in like that. Now don't force it if it's swollen, because these do swell when they come in contact with moist air sand it slightly, that way it won't telegraph through the board. And I'll make this other cut right here on that witness mark, just like that. And it's always helpful to have it clamped down and I like these auto action clamps to do that. 
So I'll bring that off the edge like so, lock it in place, make that cut. And once all the cuts are made for the number 20 biscuits, then what I'm going to do is brush out glue on the seams, make sure I put about three drops of glue in each slot, and then I frame, draw that whole face frame together at those mitered corners with clamps and let that cure out. And from there, we know exactly how to size the door that will fit inside the face frames. We'll go make the door. While the face frame dries out, those mitered corners need to be solid for it to hold this door frame. Now this is two and a quarter inch oak. That's just a hair over three quarters of an inch thick. And here you can see the dominoes, 50 millimeter uh, number 10s. And these sockets are cut using a domino cutter. I just rig it up, clamp the board down, make the ends nice and deep, cut on center, and then the long running styles I put the domino mate cut in those in the appropriately marked places. And that's how you put the entire door frame assembly. Now, the other thing is, you see that channel right there? That's going to take the glass. An easy way to cut that's at the table saw, but make sure that it's only 5 sixteenths of an inch up so you can slide the glass in. And then all of this just pops together like so. And of course this gets glued. But you can't do that until you get the finish on it. And what I'm using today, and the reason for that is, if you put finish with the glass on there, you wouldn't be able to get finish or stain inside that groove, and it would be unsightly. Okay, I'll just get my gloves out, because with gel stains, it's fun, but it's messy. So, and what I like about gel stains and finishes, when you wipe it on, it stays there. And then you let it dry a bit, depending upon the species of wood, and this is red oak. Um, you let it soak in just the right amount of time, then wipe off the excess. And then you can wipe on a top coat, and you're in business. And if you need to blend colors, that's easy enough to do. Uh, just buy different color so of gel stain, and what happens is you can use it like an artist's palette, and you can mix up colors to give you a perfect color match. So I'll just get this wiped out and finished, and once that's done and the finish is cured, I can insert the glass and then carefully glue it up together and let that cure out. And while the frame, door frame, with the glass is curing out, it's time to put together the rest of the cabinet. This is where I get a little nervous because everything has to fit perfectly. So the first thing I'm going to do is use this jig to create four pockets and drill that until it hits the stop collar. That's good. Just like that. Handy device right there. And what we do is use these special painted fasteners just to right length. And they go through this edge and they will hold on the face frame. So the face frame goes up and in between. And I want to bring it before I press it into the tight fit. I want to make sure it's flush with the top here and here, and I press it down gently, and that's a perfect fit. That makes me feel very good, and it keeps everything square. That looks good, and now what I can do is hold that face frame on with the pocket screws. There are a bunch of different ways that you could do this, but this works. And it's straightforward, and it doesn't cost a fortune. You know, I've shown you a lot of different jigs today, a lot of different tools that you can use. And there are a million different ways to build a piece like this. The main thing is, use your ingenuity, get it done. Now that holds it in, I'll do the same down below, 
and then the door, when it's dry, will be hinged onto this. But the other thing that I have to do is mount this hardware right here so that this piece will be pocket screwed here and here, and this will be hinged. So when the lid comes down on this, that's the top of the cabinet, there will be a secret compartment, which is kind of handy. I like those. So I'll measure that left and right. I've got five inches there. Let's see what we've got on the other side. Just uh, need to move it over a quarter. That's where it needs to be, left and right. And these are no mortise hinges, uh, heavy duty. I wanted them to be stout. And so what I can do now is use a VIX bit, which has a little jig on the end that lets you center up the hole and drill hinges in perfectly. So I'll get that mounted and then screw this in and then we can stand it up and mount the door. Now gently, I am fastening in that hinged top to the secret compartment, and voila, it nicely hides a good storage space. You could put lots of stuff in there. Now, here's the door that fits perfectly inside of that chestnut face frame. And so now what I need to do is use the right style of hinge, a no mortise finial topped hinge, and I'm going to use this, space it down five and a quarter inches, and then I use another smaller VIX bit to match the size of the screw that needs to be hand driven because these are brass. And if you don't hand drive these, you'll twist the heads right off and good luck getting them out of there. Okay, so I'll mount these, same at the bottom, and then fasten it to the face frame. Drill a couple holes for the shelf pegs, put in some lighting, and then we can do a little bit of finishing. So, a natural leaf pull on that. And I can swing that around and it rests on the top rail there, so that's safe. Now, to put the shelving in, I need one of those pads on each one of the shelf brackets. And this little jig right here with a stop collar, and that's a quarter inch brad point bit, is the way I can go in and get those perfectly placed. Now, you can buy fancy jigs for this, but the truth is, Ordinary pegboard, cut it in to whatever dimension that works for you, and the holes are spaced on one inch, mark them, and you can go in with a stop collar, drill the holes left and right, do the same on the top, which I've already done, with the same marks to give me where I need to go in to index the holes to finish them out. And then, if you have price plexiglass lately. It's through the roof, so recycle it. Clean it up, and what's cool about plexiglass, the heavy stuff, thick, is that it lets the light through, and so I have LED lights that I'll rig out in this too, and then set this up, a little bit of finish, time for the reveal. What do you think? There are a lot of blended pieces here, but I love the way it's come together, and of course, the secret compartment is always a plus in my book, but what finishes did I like the most? Well, I go to the wiping gel that you saw earlier. The Danish oils are great, and Arm R Seal on Walnut is just hard to beat. So that's it from the American Wood Shop, and next week, you'll get to see the artist that made this creation and many more, and we have this chair that's out of this world from 200 years ago. So join us then. Thanks for being with us today and stay well and stay busy in your wood shop. I'm loving this. Let me show you the side here just a little bit. Woodcraft since 1928.
providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Pro Tools, for tool pros. Rikon Tools. Woodcraft Magazine. Projects, plans, and web links designed to help you make wood work. P.S. Wood, home of Timberwolf Swedish Silicon Steel bandsaw blades and super sharp scroll saw blades. A bed to sleep on. A table to share meals. A house that feels like a home. The Furniture Bank of Central Ohio. Providing furniture to neighbors in need. For more information on tips behind the American Woodshop and watch free episodes 24-7, check us out online and like us on Facebook.